Welcome back to the Rome Total War Randomizer AI only campaign. And you know what? The comment section was right. How did an Armenian army get all the way up here? They spawned all the way down here. How did they possibly achieve that? I have no idea at all. In addition to that, thank you for 500 likes on the last episode. As promised, the tutorial guide has been uploaded. Check the link in the description. That guide goes over how to download and install the mod. It also goes over how to use it, like the basics of what all the different settings do and the random worlds that can be generated. So if you're interested, check that one out. Yeah, it was definitely very highly demanded. People even asking on my Twitter as well, uh, which was uh, very funny to see, uh, that I very rarely get. So yeah, maybe I should cover more of this mod. Maybe another AI-only campaign someday. Maybe a Let's Play, I don't know, could be fun. Actually, that could be really fun. Starting with only one settlement in some random part of the world. That could be a good laugh, and then discovering where all the other factions are. Oh, it could be like some new world, or some civilization type of total war. That could be interesting, but anyway, let's get on with the part two of the AI-only campaign. And the Skip PI, they did try to take this settlement, but I believe they failed. But they've come in now with reinforcements. And there we go, well done to the Skip PI getting a deeper foothold in Italy. Rome is now in sight. Yeah, the Skip PI doing very well. The Julii doing well over here as well. Uh, just taking Antioch in the last episode. The Brutii, they're doing okay, but they have lost land to the Greeks. Uh, which are the other major power. Yeah, in this episode we're going to see a lot of faction versus faction wars and see the major powers begin to arise. Oh, the world is crumbling from the Numidians, uh, losing Sinope, their connection to uh, the Black Sea. They've got one settlement left. Could they be the next faction to get destroyed? We've already lost Thrace. We've already lost the Gauls. Who is the third faction going to be? There's nothing stopping the Skip PI. They're going straight in for Rome. They want it. Numidia's final settlement is under siege. Oh, but something happened. Yes, the Numidians surrendered themselves to the Iberians, the Spanish. Wow, sir. That was actually a very smart move by Numidia. They knew they were dead, so they became a vassal of Spain up in Iberia, I guess. <laughs> and now they have a truce with Rome for Julia. That's interesting. That was smart by the AI. Playing the survival game. I like it. And there we go. Rome back in Roman hands. Well done to the Skip PI, and they've got more troops coming. Yeah, they, they want to take the rest of it. And this is going to be some quite valuable territory to them. The Skip PI, the Skip PI I can imagine right now, are a very wealthy faction. They've got, the, they've got the trade from Greece, they've got Crete as well. They're probably going to take Cyprus eventually. That's a funny looking Cyprus, I mean Rhodes, uh, for that wonder there. And, you know, once they take Rome and southern Italy, and maybe Sicily, ooh, they don't have a lot of money pouring in. Oh, Spanish protectorate or no Spanish protectorate, the Julii do not care. They are attacking anyway, but I missed something. That is not their final settlement. They have Crimea as well, and quite a large stack up here to defend it. The Parthians and the British are now at war. Nothing we can see yet, but yeah, that could become an interesting border. Meanwhile, the Armenian army has converted to Shrekism, living only in the swamps. Alright, luckily for Numidia, that was not their final settlement then. Are the Spanish going to come in and take it back? I don't know, this looks like a mini Spanish crusade. Thereafter, are they going to try and take it back? Or are they just bugged in the mountains? Oh yes, I believe they are bugged in the mountains. <laughs> really, Skip PI signing an alliance with Carthage? 
Boo. We don't like to see those types of relationships. Stupii versus Carthage. Well, Stupii with Carthage. Oh no, but they did take Capua. And Hannibal seems to have crossed the Mediterranean. Oh, Captain Juba, I should call him. This was not here before. I'm sure the Greeks have taken this from Parthia. Ooh, that could be an interesting war and very good for the Greek city-states. If they can just take the German regions up here. That could be really good for them. Oh, it's not looking good for Parthia right now. Home sweet home has fallen to the British. A war on two fronts. What is it with the Germans and wars on two fronts? <laughs> The Greeks are crossing into their land, and the British continue expanding. Oh, that they're having a lot of luck here. We haven't seen much from the British, but now they're taking some decent land. The Romans had declared war on the Spanish, a fort under siege, and an army heading for the capital. Can they take it? Capital now under siege, but the fort not yet taken. Oh, that poor diplomat rip. You know what, F in the comment section for that diplomat, that was just sad to see, he just went straight flop down at the gates there, trying to make a peace deal with the Spanish to end this war, but no. Rip. That, that was actually sad to see, I heard a little thud as well as it landed. <laughs> ah, it's good to see these Roman cities become Roman once more, although you can still see a bit of barbarian in that one, at least Rome itself is now fixed up. Tarentum under siege, there's a lot of Scythian troops here. Can they actually take it? Yeah, they got rid of all the troops. The settlement has not yet fallen, but they got the soldiers out of the way with. And the Julii expanding as well. Ooh, this seems to be Rome's episode. Apart from the Brutii who are doing nothing. Oh, oh no, poor Brutii, that does not look good. <laughs> and the Seleucid Empire going for the Dacians. And they actually took it as well. The Seleucid Empire took Nabomartius from Dacia. I feel this series is just a compilation of sentences that I am never going to say in a normal Rome Talk to War Let's Play. That's all this is. Tarentum has fallen to the Scipii. Oh, and the Macedonians took Bostra from the Germans and they're heading to Jerusalem as well. Meanwhile, Germany's armies are in the... In the west of Africa here, battling the Carthaginians, I'll say it again. What is it with Germans and fighting wars on two fronts? <laughs> it don't matter if they're Parthian Germans or Egyptian Germans, it's always the case. Scythia's final foothold in mainland Italy, Croton, now under siege. Okay, it's been five turns. Come on, Scipii, it's not like it's a difficult one to take. Just attack already. Uh, up here, ooh. Damn, the Greek city-states have taken Parthia's capital. And it seems Vicus Gothi is under siege as well from the British. And the Germans are getting their revenge on the Macedonians. Yeah, Damascus under siege, Bostra back under siege. Yeah, the, the Germans were quick to respond into that one. Hey, Croton finally fell, and Scythia was the next faction to get destroyed? I did not expect that, they got regicided there. Ooh, the regicide. Regicide is where if you lose all your family members, or your faction heir and faction leader in the same battle, then the faction becomes rebel. You just simply die. And that's what we see here. I always have to explain regicide, because when I don't, someone always brings it up like, what happened? Even if it's part 20 of a series and I talked about regicide, I've talked about it in the last 20 episodes, someone still brings it up. And it's Carthage who swoop on in to try and take Masana there from the Mebels and Syracuse as well. Good luck, Carthage. Syracuse has fallen. Damascus fell to the Germans, and Sidon is immediately put under siege afterwards. Meanwhile, what are the Scipii going to do? First of all, they destroyed the Egyptians, almost. Then they swooped on through to take Scythia, taking most of Italy. 
if I was the Seleucid, if I was the Scipiais, I would take the Seleucid Empire. Continue taking the rest of Italy. Then they will be in a very good spot. But what will the AI do? Could be literally anything. Seems like the Scipii and the Julii are continuing on one of my old memes of never taking roads. <laughs> oh, that's an old one. And there we go, Carthage unites all of Sicily under their banner. Okay, now that could give us some idea of where the Scipii plan to expand. They have gone to war with Parthia. There's no chance for taking that, surely not. Alright, they've brought down the garrison a little bit, but they took some losses as well. They need to get their reinforcements in there. The Germans have taken Sidon, Bostra still under siege, and Palmyra now under siege. Macedon could be the next faction to die. And there we go, the Scipii take campus lazy G's. Well done to them, slowly surrounding the Egyptians. Ooh. <laughs> They're toying with their food right now. Come on, I do want to see Egypt die. Why are they still alive? They should not still be alive at this point. Palm Raphael, Bostra still standing. I don't think Macedon will die next, because they do still hold Salamis, unless they die to regicide, which we have seen before when factions have island territories, but, you know, I think they could still survive out here. Oh, the Germans go straight up here to Hatra as well. Yeah, they're clearly very angry at the Macedonians. They want them gone. Hmm, it seems the British don't think they can get any more land out of Parthia. The Greeks put Gothi under siege, and so the British go to war with Pontus. Yeah, they want to take Pontus territory. Interesting move by the British Scythians, I guess we're going to have to call them. Parthia down to their final two settlements. If the Greeks continue at the rate they're going at, Parthia could be the next faction to get destroyed. And the Scipii wanting on the fun as well, noticing a weak Pontus and... Oh, Scipii, that's a bit cruel. They don't push for Aquincum, the closest settlement to them. No, they cut around, putting Lovavum and Lovasis under siege, cutting off the British so the British cannot get in there and take territory. That's a bit harsh. They're trying to... Yeah, they're taking the frontline settlements first, and then they're going to take a quincum. Oh, that's a really cruel way to do it. Similar to what they did with the Egyptians. Similar to what they did with Scythia as well. Taking this settlement and then pushing on Rome immediately, cutting off the Seleucid Empire. Are we seeing a human player behind the Scipii? It feels like it today. Oh, wow, the Scipii. I've never actually seen this before, I don't think, in Rome Talk to War AI only. Four settlements under siege in one turn. Oh, if they take four in one turn, that's going to look beautiful on the map. Uh, Bostra did finally fall to the Germans. And, okay, Hatra is under siege, but by the Julii. Interesting. Hatra fell to the Julii. Oh, that looked beautiful on the map. Two settlements fell to the Scipii. They did cut off Pontus off. Their final settlement is under siege. They've given up with Egypt for now. And Macedon come back? From the dead. Macedon come back from the dead. And the Germans are the one to put it under siege. What was that? They must have retaken it. Or the city revolted and turned back to Macedon. I don't know what happened there. But wow, that was interesting. And now the Germans, I don't know if they want to take it. All whilst avoiding a war with the Julii. And there we go, Pontus is now dead. They actually did it, they got rid of Pontus. In just a couple of turns, really. That was a that was an impressive sweep there. And faction destroyed. And there we go. The Germans took Hatra. Macedon still alive though in Salamis. But they have to be careful with their generals, they could get regicided. Oh, Spain has turned against... Oh no! I was about to say Spain has tur turned against their former vassal, Numidia. But it's the other way around. The Numidians have turned against their masters and... They want to form a little Crimean Scythian Empire up here. Interesting. 
Meanwhile, it's not looking good for Spain at all. Their capital is yet again under siege by the Julii. Oh, New Media, why did you give it up? You had a free settlement right here, but they've given it up. Ah, oh, well. But the Julii don't give up. Romans don't give up. The Spanish capital has fallen to them. And right now, the Spanish not looking good. Final three settlements. But is this the comeback from Parthia? They've gone back and taken their home sweet home. Domus Dulcis Domus from the British. Parthian comeback, maybe? Or maybe not. But, well, they have the troops, I don't know. Anyway, that is where I believe we have to end today's episode. We've seen quite a lot in just that short period of time. And as I said, you know, it was faction versus faction wars and the rise of great empires, great powers, uh, getting ready for part three. As promised, that's what I said at the start. That's what it usually always is. So that was what part two is. Part three is great powers versus great powers warring against each other. And we're going to see some rise into superpowers, like controlling possibly like a quarter of a map, and others that will completely topple. So, right now I will say we have four superpowers. The Germans, uh, who claimed it after kicking out Macedon, although they haven't done much in this campaign really. Like, they mostly started with most of their power, but still, you know, they took a lot of territory in this episode. The Julii, controlling Anatolia here, looking like quite a good empire right now. Then we have the Greeks, who in part 1 kicked out the Brutii from France, uh, but in part 2 took, I think, four settlements uh, from the Parthians. Oh yeah, they just took this this turn, and we'll probably take Denmark eventually as well. And number four, or should I say number one, the Scipii. The Scipii, who continued their conquest, taking the rest of Italy down here, four settlements there. They did very well. Then they took three settlements almost in one go from Pontus. They took another territory from Parthia. So yeah, that is the four great powers of part two. And in part three, I think we will see them war against each other. Scipii versus the Greeks, Julii versus the Germans. If I had to put prediction prediction on it, I think the Romans will beat both, if I had to have a guess. But anyway, we'll have to find that out in part three. Who knows what is going to happen on this completely random world of Rome Total War. Part 3 will be on Friday, subscribe to get notified of the next and future episodes. Check out the download link in the description if you want to play this for yourself. And share with anyone you think may be interested. The more support this series gets, the more likely I am to do more episodes and more campaigns. Maybe even a Let's Play as well at some point if people are interested. Anyway, I have been Melkor, and until the next one, goodbye.